Welcome to curl 7.88.1. This is February 20, 2023. Uh, I did the previous release uh, video just days ago, but here we are again. Um, <clears throat> yes, so this is me. Uh, I am Daniel. I started this curl thing a long time ago. I work for Wolf SSL. You can find me on Mastodon these days. I am at Baghdad there. So I'm going to do this presentation like getting through the different steps that I try to do all the times. Some numbers, but I'm not going to get into any security problems because there weren't any this time. And we haven't announced any new features because this is a quick bug fix release. I'm going to get through the, maybe highlight the most important ones at least. Talk about the removals for the future and what's coming up next. So this is release 214. Uh, and even though we've done it so many times, I still managed to make uh, some bad bugs in the previous release. And this time then we did a quick one uh, follow up to fix the, the problems that we found in 7.88.0. But still we managed to get contributions from 19 people and uh, those of course had a few new ones and 10 authors uh, wrote these commits that we merged into the code. Uh, in these five days since the previous release. So quite an intense short little period here. And um, we are now up at uh, 9,103 days since, up, in, since, up, since inception. 25 bike fixes we count in five days. Pretty good, I think. But 25 bike fixes, some of them were, uh, we fixed some documentation, we fixed some other sort of minor things that aren't really you know, worthy to discuss here and, and waste your time on, but you can read it up on the, on the changelog, of course, uh, if you want to just read it all yourself. But the maybe the six most, six most important bugs are that the one that actually triggered uh, me to do this uh, release at all is the HTTP2 multiplex data corruption. And <clears throat> it turns out this is not actually, it wasn't a new bug because it, the, the bug existed already before, but due to an optimization we did for, for the last release, this bug was now became more easy to trigger and it needs some particular circumstances to trigger. And uh, those include sort of frames, HTTP2 frame sizes, and they had to be multiple frames over the connection in the buffer for the same transfer in, this, in the same moment in time, um, which happened to be likely to happen uh, in, in some particular use cases and very unlikely to happen in most other use cases. But still, when they triggered, when, when this situation triggered, um, it caused data corruption or actually it read from the buffer incorrectly. So it, it would end up the same size, but wrong content in, in the data delivered on the score to the application. Pretty nasty one. We fixed it. We also now have a test case that could reproduce the problem. And we so we now can actually verify that we don't uh, reintroduce it again. Pretty complicated case, but it was a fine result in the end, I think. Stefan Ising and Harris Sinton did a good job there triaging and bug fixing this. Another thing that someone pointed out, not at all as alarming, but just a silly bug, is that sometimes when you told curl, you have this uh, connection timeout period, um, curl would use only allow half the timeout period before it would give up the connection. So the, if you said, I want to try the connection for 10 seconds, curl would give up after five because of some mistake in the logic. You know, the timeout, the connection timeout logic is complicated depending because it um, adjusts due to the number of IP addresses and how to do everything. So uh, anyway, <clears throat> it was a mistake. So now it properly uses the entire duration that you actually specify that you want to allow curl to use. Another silly thing. Uh, I think this was a regression, right? So it, we, you couldn't actually ask for HTTP 3 if you hadn't built HTTP 2 into curl. They are actually uh, not mutual. I mean, you don't have to have H2 to, to have H3. So curl supports uh, a combination. You just build curl with H1 and H3. But if you did, you couldn't actually enable it because of a mistake. Now you can that again. <coughs> 
the second uh, i would say possibly is the second bug in the previous release that was slightly important or slightly uh, critical for users is that this socket pair thing and 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 bear with me with for some uh, internal f details here but the socket pair function in curl is an emulation of the socket pair function call the socket pair function exists in in POSIX, right it exists on on virtually all platforms except windows and a few other things and we use socket pair in curl in particular for when we the most obvious case is when we fire up a thread to do name resolving and and uh, we use that socket pair to to tell the mother thread that we're done with resolving because otherwise we, we can't tell when we're done so we would we would have to pull uh, or sort of you know check repeatedly anyway that socket pair is used for that and so when we build on Windows, we have a socket pair emulation function that works exactly as the socket pair function, but it's our own code. And for the previous release, we changed that, or I changed that because of reasons. I talked about that in the previous release. But anyway, I, I've, I changed it to fix a problem. And I, of course, then introduced a new problem because eh, I didn't do it correctly. So if you would do a lot of uh, repeated curl, um, transfers you would you know especially you could for example invoke the curl command line client you know over and over and over i don't know many times and <clears throat> the curl my fun this function now it it sets up it, the socket pair emulation basically creates a listening socket and a sender socket you know it does the entire tcp thing just over localhost so that you could set up a listener and set up a sender and you can send data so that it becomes a pipe basically but with sockets, because we need that. Sockets, not file descriptors. Um, but if you would do that, after a number of times, the, the reading of that, setting up that socket and sending and reading from it, it would cause an E would block. You know, it wouldn't manage to read the entire thing in the first call. And I didn't read that correctly. I find it hilarious that you can actually reach this situation with a completely new socket you would write eight bytes but you can't read all those eight bytes back in the in the first call and i cannot understand how the <laughs> design actually works why that would suddenly happen just because you did it a lot of times before but it doesn't matter and um, it happened and uh, I, this is basically just fix the code to make sure that if it reads an e would block it would you know do the proper thing just wait for the activity read again and fill up the buffer and verify it and blah 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 <clears throat> seems to work crossing my fingers that i didn't ruin anything in any other new way uh, but this this was only reported on windows um, and this is uh, as i said mostly used on windows i think we're using it uh, on a few other platforms but i can't really recall which ones right now so um fix I fixed two problems in the curl test suite and recently I changed the curl the main curl the main program in, in the test suite that runs all tests is called run tests and it's a Perl script and I modified it to be more picky about warnings you know to make sure that it properly fails and you know rejects and burns if it runs into a, a warning just to make sure that we detect it better in the test suites and in the CI jobs and everything so it wouldn't just you know say warning and continue it would say warning die and we would see test failures and, and we would fix it and that's uh, generally a good idea except it turns out that we never run the test suite ourselves in, in the CI jobs with the verbose mode and obviously some of our users do more frequently so I got reports immediately that sure we got this initialized value port warning as, as you can see on the screen here and uh, when we get that uh, <coughs> curl immediately then stops the tests because it's a, a, a fatal problem and uh, you would run the rest of the tests and eh, annoying and it's a silly bug book and it's easy fix of course and it's fixed now and s we also fixed another one in the test which is slightly less annoying maybe or bad but <coughs> we support this weird SRP authentication it's a TLS SRP it's called um, you should 
read up on it if you don't know what it is and and or just forget about it because no one will ever use it but we support it and we verify it in the test suite so if you build curl with srp support we check that if you have the gnu serve tls program installed we've used that as a tool to verify our own srp support because that's the yeah yeah well it's an easy sort of easy way to verify srp with <clears throat> But then it turns out that GNU TLS, this comes from the GNU TLS project. So if you have GNU TLS, some package installed, you get this server installed as well. And it turns out that from a recent version, I think 3.8.0 or something. I'm not sure, look it up. But anyway, from that version, they disable SRP by default. So if you have a, just a default build of the new version, this server doesn't support srp anymore and we run our tests against the, ser the server and blah 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 suddenly all the our srp tests would fail because it wouldn't work anymore of course because the server didn't support it anymore uh, so now we basically just make sure that before we run any any srp tests we verify that this server actually supports srp because otherwise we can't run the tests and we would just skip the tests if we can't test it it's unfortunate because this will eventually make our SRP logic less tested because I'm sure everyone is going to upgrade to this uh, new GNU TLS version and we're going to do less SRP testing and uh, eh, but what do we do? We probably will need to do our own uh, GNU serve TLS installation somewhere to make sure that we actually verify this. And um, with that, those are, are the six I say most important bug fixes for this release <coughs> we did a few others read up on them in the changelog if you want to get into the details and of course as i mentioned before we have some pending removals i have gone through them before but i'll just do them quickly again because it is important that you know what we're going to remove from curl going forward we are going to remove support for building curl without a 64-bit data type and we're going to do that in one month Nobody has had any problems with this. So this is going to happen in, in version 8. Later this year, we are going to report remove at least the, uh, the NSS support. We might also remove the GSKit support. Uh, we've had some blowback on the GSKit uh, decision, so we might have to change that, but uh, we'll see. Um, speak up about this to us if you have opinions we're also going to remove support for space separated no proxy patterns next year but that's you know that's still far away but don't use space separated no proxy patterns uh, with anything because it's not globally supported it should be comma separated <coughs> and um, then we have the next release that we are going to call uh, version 8.0.0 .0 unless we, of course we have to do another emergency patch release which we really really don't want to do uh, so um, I seriously hope that we are going to do the next version called 8.0.0 .0. it's going to happen on March 20 which is exactly a month from this recording date and we're only going to do bug fixes as you again one month so we only have one month left until that release and there's not enough time to do any features we're just going to do bug fixes and also a way to make sure that we can bump to version 8 and, and possibly hopefully ideally get it really solid f more polished and, and just bug fixes to make sure that it becomes a really solid base to you know start the the journey on on version 8 into the future and everything is going to be great. The release notes are going to be there, of course. Um, as always, if, if you ever, at any point in time, uh, if you ever are curious about uh, what's what's going on, what's in Git now, what's going to be included in the next release, this is the page for you. It always con uh, includes the sort of the pending release notes, updated every few days, five days, week, like that. So this is again, the final version 7. I said it before, right, in the, in the previous release, and this is again the final <laughs> version 7. <laughs> but hey, what do you do? <coughs> so if you have any problems uh, or whatever with curl, uh, especially of course with your commercial use, your company use of curl, we, we I work for Wolf SSL, we sell curl support, we can take care of you, uh, we have all sorts of different uh, support packages and just get in touch and we 
uh, we can work that out. I could sort of start working on your issues already this afternoon if you're just quick. If you find bugs or anything, you know, even down to spelling errors in the documentation or whatever, um, we're anxious to hear from you. So, of course, report your bugs over there on, on GitHub. And I have this GitHub t-shirt today just in, in honor of our bug tracker. Uh, and, of course, if you have any security problems, you suspect security problems, you uh, you want to get your reward, we, we will pay you money for security problems being reported. Report them over here, attacker1.com. <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, secure problems at Hacker One. These are our fine sponsors, February 2023. I'm in the way of some of them, so let me hide myself. So yes, we have a lot of great sponsors. They are making sure that we can do curl the way we want uh, them. It. I mean, the project and everything. We. I make sure that we can give out sponsors, uh, sort of give out stickers. I wanted to say that we can run the servers. We do have host bandwidth hosting and uh, DNS, and we have sponsors of the project uh, pen, pay, paying us for things and and CI services and just you know money wise. So these are great sponsors. Everyone to have a look and there. Thank you, uh, uh, all sponsors. And with this, I think we can say that this is, well, this is the 788.1 release presentation for this time. Um, I'm, I'm really, really hope that I will not be back in five days with, uh, with another release presentation. Um, but until the next release presentation by 